Good morning and welcome to Zen Fits here in Blackstone, Virginia, the center of the world. Okay, I keep talking about this center of the world. Let's, let's talk about that this morning. The title of this talk is You Are the Big Bang. You Are the Big Bang. It, it's, uh, um, I'm taking off from uh, the Big Bang Theory and uh, Sheldon's Spot. That was one of the uh, key jokes <laughs> or, or uh, absurdity of Sheldon. Um, Sheldon was uh, both absurd and truthful. In other words, Sheldon's absurdity points to a profound truth, if you can make the leap. But anyway, we're, we're going to look at the Big Bang Theory from a metaphorical point of view. Can we go through it? Can we penetrate it? Can we see to the other side of it? Can we see what the show is pointing to? That's why it was so popular. Not what it did, but what it points to. What it points to. So let's start with Sheldon's spot. Of course, it was ridiculous because it was a spot on the sofa. But we all have, we all have our spot, like I have my spot at the table, and I have a little... Uh, placemat there, a little Buddha placemat that one of my students gave me uh, some years ago. I uh, made a placemat for my table with a Buddha on it. So that's my spot. And I have my chair at my office. That's my spot. And then I have a recliner in the office, um, in the living room. It's my spot. Somebody comes in the house, I get upset if they sit in my spot. <laughs> we all have our spot where everything is just right. Sheldon's spot talked about well, the light coming in, the placement of the furniture, the energies. You know, there's a whole art form of what is it called? Fouché or something, I don't know, where you find your spot. So your spot is at the center. It's like the, the axle of a wheel, the hub. All the spokes go to the spot. And this is a religious or a cosmic thing, too, because ancient civilizations all had a spot. They created these big juggernauts. Uh, the, the pyramids were the Egyptian spot. Um, there's Cosmic Mountain. Uh, Noah's Ark uh, docked on the Cosmic Mountain. Um, Avatar, the home tree, is the spot. Um, the, every kind of, Washington, D.C., the phallic monument there is the spot. Um, the spot of Christianity or Catholicism is Rome, the Vatican, you see. What the, I'm jumping around here, but don't move. So what Protestantism did was it made the spot movable. Instead of the spot being in Rome with the Pope, you could have your portable spot if you had a Bible. So the Bible became your spot. If you had a Bible in your house, you were the center of the world. I remember my sister-in-law, uh, back in the 90s, they were evangelicals, uh, they've all died, but uh, they had a big, she had June, they were June, Jimmy and June, they had a big Bible in their foyer with some eyeglasses on it, reading glasses. So you walked into their foyer and there was a big open Bible with some reading glasses on it as if you just interrupted them reading the Bible. In other words, they're, metaphorically, they're always reading the Bible. <coughs> the Bible is their spot. But it's portable. So wherever you go, if you have a Bible, you're in your spot. You see? Now, our spot is the cell phone. So wherever we go, we have a cell phone. That's, I'm in the spot. I'm in the center of the Internet with my cell phone. All the internet comes into that phone, and I go out to it. My spot is where the incoming and the outcoming are balanced. Incoming, outgoing, that spot is not moving. It's an immovable spot, because coming and going, you're always in your spot. You see? This is a Zen truth. Coming and going, you never leave home said the Zen master. Coming and going, you're always in your spot. Your spot is the place where the outgoing and the incoming meet. That's why we like to go to the beach. 
We sit at the beach, you're in your spot. The tide comes in, the tide goes out. You're in your spot. You're at rest. You're at peace. You don't have to do anything. Everything is done. Everything. This is why people find, uh, maybe they, they get an idea for a business. They go to Walmart and they see something like, uh, there's something about the other, but somebody invented the shopping cart. You went to the stores, there nobody had any shopping carts. In other words, they were just carrying bags. They couldn't buy very much. So what a, well, what about if you had a shopping cart? Then you could buy a lot of shit. <laughs> so he created the shopping cart, became a billionaire. <clears throat> An idea. Now that idea was his spot. In other words, it expanded and grew from an idea to a multi-million dollar business. So this is the American dream of finding your spot or your business where without effort it just grows. It's like an organism, your business grows. You see, but this, you know, you get the idea here, your spot. Now business is a portable spot. In, in, in our culture today, if you get an idea for a business, you can grow it in there. McDonald's was some guy's spot. And now his spot is in every town. You go to McDonald's, there's your spot. There's his spot, and it grows, multiplies. But we're talking about what's your spot. How do you find your spot? So the Big Bang is kind of like a parody, a joke, a metaphor for your spot. Now the Big Bang is the science, science the, the scientific answer to the religious spot. Now in religion, the first cause, the spot, the immovable spot, is God. God created the universe. But in the secular world, the scientific world, God has no power. Science has power. So what's the spot in science? Well, it's the Big Bang. Go back in time, there was a spot where the universe exploded. It's like an idea. <gasps> the guy goes to Walmart and he sees, he has an idea. A shopping cart. The Big Bang. His Big Bang was the shopping cart. Created a shopping cart. The funny thing about that story was that he had the shopping carts and nobody used them. So he got the store, the employees of the stores to go out and get the shopping carts and bring them in. And people would see that. Oh, look. And everybody started using the shopping cart. But they had to be demonstrated because it was so off spot, you see. <laughs> anyway, you were, we're, we're playing with this idea now. And the big question is, where is your spot? Sheldon knew where his spot was. It was on his sofa. <laughs> where is your spot? Is it located in space and time? Is it at home in your recliner chair or your office chair? My wife, her spot is in the kitchen. But she's also a crafter, so her, her, she has a little shop upstairs. That's her spot. My spot is with the computer, my chair at my computer, or my recliner where I watch TV. But anyway, we all have our spots, but they're dependent upon location. Now the problem is, the question is, how can I make my spot portable? How can I be at home no matter where I go? How can I be in my spot, whether I'm at Walmart, whether I'm visiting a family, whether I'm caught in traffic. That's a good one. Caught in traffic. Can you be in your spot in traffic? Can you be at rest in traffic? Can you be at peace <coughs> in traffic? Can you be at rest in an argument? Can you be at peace when there's uh, sickness, death? Can you be in your spot when you get cancer? Where is your spot? Is your spot dependent upon a location? Well, if it is, your spot is subject to change or death or threat. Somebody can take away your chair. Somebody can take away your location. 
Or if you get exiled, where's your spot then? Now, America was founded on people whose spot was portable. The explorers went west. Were they stressed because their spot was back east? No, their spot was portable. <clears throat> they had something aroused. They had their spot awakened inside of them. So no matter where they went, they were in their spot. These are our Western heroes. The Western hero is always in his spot. Or that any action figure. We love our action figures because they're always in their spot. Indiana Jones is always in his spot. No matter what he does, he's always in sync. He's always at center. Everything happens as a gift. He's in a fix and whatever MacGyver, whatever he needs is right there. Whatever tool he needs is right there. He creates the tools because his spot is creative. Your spot is creative. So if you're in your spot, you are creative no matter where you are. You're in your spot. You're not created by the world, you create the world. Ah, that's the shift. That's the shift, you see. The Big Bang Theory is the spot is back there in time. But the Big Buddha Bang, the Buddha Bang, you see, is that you are your spot and it's in you and it's portable and you're always in it, but we don't know it because we have deferred to some external spot. We think God did it. People always they do something really miraculous. Say, oh, I didn't do it. God did it. Or somebody else did it. Or something did it. You say, oh, I didn't do it. You say, yeah, you did it. <laughs> but the thing is about your spot, when you find your spot, there's the sensation that you're not doing it. The hero who wins the Medal of Honor is often embarrassed to get the Medal of Honor because he knows he didn't do the action. He was in his spot. But he wasn't choosing to do it. He wasn't personally dictating what he did. He just did it without effort, without thought, without fear. He was in his spot. But then he sensed, well, I'm not... You know, so this is where the ego comes in, you see. The ego thinks it's the spot, but it knows that great things that happen, inventions, ideas, come from outside, kind of like grace. So you really can't take credit for it. If you do, you know you're a hypocrite. So anyway, we usually defer our spot to somebody else because we know that that great idea didn't come from me. It came from outside. But where is outside? Outside is just beyond your consciousness. Outside is just the boundary of your little mind. So in great moments, when you have a great spot, you see, basically your ego, your boundary mind, your conscious mind has just collapsed. And you become your spot. You become the idea. The idea is you. You know it without evidence. You know. You know without evidence that this is true. You're in your spot. You're in your spot. So we're always in our spot. But at the same time, we're not in our spot. So we have to be able to find a balance between the Big Bang that's outside, the cause of the world, and my spot that's the cause of me. So this is a kind of a, a schizophrenic thing here. We are a thing in the world caused by the world, has laws, science, rational, all that. But at the same time, I'm causing my world. I'm the cause of my world. I'm the first cause. There's two viewpoints. Two viewpoints. One is secular, science, rational. The other one is Buddha. <laughs> but it could be any mystical tradition. But Buddha Bang, the Buddha Bang is the awakening of I am my spot. I am the center of the world and the world is me. I am the center of the world but at the same time I'm not the center of the world. So there's two viewpoints. An awakening is when you can put the two viewpoints together. It's like a martini. The martini has two viewpoints. There's the viewpoint of gin and there's the viewpoint of vermouth. They're different. 
wine, alcohol. Put them in the in in the uh, uh, whatever. Stir them together. Ooh, don't shake. Stir together. Ooh, pour them in a glass. You can't separate the gin from the vermouth. And you say, ah, I'm in my spot. <laughs> Thanks for dropping in.